In the following video, we are going to examine how to find all the zeros of a function when just given one zero. Now, in these two examples we're going to look at, the process we're going to use is synthetic division to the quadratic formula. And that process should look familiar because we've used it before in previous lessons so far in chapter six, that if we know a zero, so I'm given the function g of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 4, I'm given the function and one of its zeros is 2. To find the rest of the zeros, I need to find the rest of the factors. So I set up my synthetic division first with my zero. Look at my degrees, my exponents. They're all decreasing with no gaps. So I'm going to set up all of my coefficients, a 1, a negative 4, 6, and negative 4. We are told that 2 is a 0. And so our factor theorem tells us that means our remainder should be 0 when we do synthetic division. So you drop down the first term. 2 times 1 is 2. Add vertically negative 4 and 2 is negative 2. 2 times 2 is negative 4. Add vertically 6 plus negative 4 is 2. And we have 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So it's true. 2 is a 0 because my remainder is 0. And so now we look at the here trinomial that remains. Write it out with the variables. You have x squared minus 2x plus 2. And so we're going to find the rest of the zeros from this. And if I look, this is not factorable. And we've learned that if you have a quadratic that's not factorable, we have the quadratic formula. And so remember, the quadratic formula states x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, everything over 2a. And so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to plug everything into the quadratic formula. You know, I have an a of 1, a b of negative 2, and a c of positive 2. And so x equals the negative of b, so the negative of a negative is positive, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 2 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 2, all over twice a, so 2 times 1. If we were to simplify this down, you know, the 2 stays. Negative 2 squared is 4, so I have 4 minus, and I have 4 times 1 times 2, so I have 4 minus 8, which is negative 4. So I have the square root of negative 4 all over 2. Still not done, because I have to simplify. And I have a negative inside of my square root, and so I can you know, take that out, make it an i, and so I have the square root of 4, which is square root of 4 is 2. So the square root of negative 4 is 2i. So x equals 2 plus or minus 2i over 2. Still not done because this is dividing by a monomial one term. So each of these have to be divided by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2i divided by 2 is 1i. So that's just i. So x equals 1 plus or minus i. And those are the remaining zeros. If I want to state all the zeros for this, we want to include the one that we were given. We're told, you know, find all zeros. So the one that's given you to you is a freebie. You just need to find the others. So all zeros are 
r x equals 2 and x equals 1 plus or minus i. And that is my final answer. All zeros include the one that is given to you and the ones we discover through synthetic division and applying the quadratic formula. Let's try one more example. Here we have x cubed minus 7x squared plus 17x minus 15 as our function. We're given one of the zeros is 3, so I'm going to make sure I use that. When I find all the zeros, that's one of them. And so with this, I'm going to do synthetic division with 3. I look at my exponents. They're decreasing. There's no gaps. So I have a 1 for my coefficient, a negative 7, a positive 17, and a negative 15. And if we do synthetic division, we're told 3 is a 0, which means the factor theorem tells us we should get a remainder of 0 here. So we drop down the first term. 3 times 1 is 3. Add vertically, we get negative 4. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Add vertically, you get 5. 3 times 5 is 15. Add vertically, and you get 0. So I write out what the polynomial is that remains, and that is 1x squared, so x squared minus 4x plus 5. This is not factorable, so we're going to have to, again, apply our quadratic formula for this, which let me write down again so we can refer to it. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, everything all over 2a. So I have x squared minus 4x plus 5. That means my a is 1. My b is negative 4. And my c is 5. So x equals the negative of b. So the negative of negative 4 is a positive 4. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. So negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 5 all over twice a so two times one and now we just start simplifying we have four plus or minus you know negative four squared is 16. negative four times one times five is negative 20. so inside the radical i have negative four and then two times one at the bottom is two and so remember, we, we did this before. We always have to simplify our radicals. The minus sign comes out and becomes an i. So you have i square root of 4, which is square root of 4 is 2. And so really, you have i times 2, which is 2i. So x equals 4 plus or minus 2i over 2. Still need to simplify. We are dividing a binomial by a monomial. We're going to have to divide each term on the top by the term on the bottom. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2i divided by 2 is 1i, which is just i. So x equals 2 plus or minus i. These are, remember, the remaining zeros. We are asked in this problem to find all the zeros, which includes the one we were given in the beginning that we used for synthetic division, which was 3. So all zeros, the real and the imaginary, are x equals 3 and x equals 2 plus or minus i. Those are my final zeros from this function. We applied in both these examples synthetic division to get a quadratic that is not factorable. So we use the quadratic formula to find the remaining zeros, which gives us all zeros when combined together.